Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our second edition of Northern Star Sports Weekly. As usual, it's me and Brian uh, for the second week. I'm Jimmy Johnson. I'm the sports editor for the Northern Star newspaper. Uh, like Jimmy just said, my name's Brian Belford. I'm a football beat writer for the Northern Star newspaper. Welcome back. Welcome uh, to like the, the first edition. I almost cut you off there. I didn't mean to do that. Labor Day weekend. How was it, Brian? Did you have a you know, good time? I had a nice Labor Day weekend. I kind of just sat on my porch and drank some iced tea, uh, did some homework, and watched some TV. Very quiet. Some Michael nice Bublé? Relaxing. Yes. Definitely. Little Michael Bublé? A little classical music to uh, get the brain working. He's easy you know? on the ears. Well, definitely. you know, going transitioning from something so soft and delicate like Michael Bublé, I heard there was a football game this weekend. You know, there was a football game. Yeah, I can't. Played. Did they play this weekend? I think they did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, really, I really wasn't sure what all those cars were and all those people wearing red jerseys and red shirts. And No, I'm joking. Of course I was there. And IU had a football game. They beat up on Army 49-26. to um, I don't know what else I can tell you that you haven't already read about the game. I will say this. I don't think we've seen everything that NIU has to offer on the football field. Um, this is a dangerous offense. They scored really, really quickly. Uh, they threw a lot of screen passes, and that's why I think that in the next game, you'll see even more. Uh, there's a couple plays, uh, new wrinkles to the offense they had in motion, um, kind of trick of the defense a little bit there, and had guys run up through the middle. And I would love to see more of that, and I think we, we will see more of that uh, in the next game against Kansas. Transitioning to the other football, uh, better known as soccer here in, uh, you know, the States, uh, men's soccer, they won the Michigan invite this past weekend. They beat up on Oakland uh, two to one, and then they beat Michigan one to nothing. Four players selected the alternate team you have Jordan Gotzi, Francis Otira, Brad Horton, and Pat Sloan. Uh, Jordan Gotzi just came up huge in that big match, though. So, uh, you know they only got one goal, but you know he shuts out the the Wolverines and everything. So Eric Luzzi and crew take care of uh, business up in Ann Arbor, and this is something that you know it looks like men's soccer is heading right in the right direction. They're off to a three zero start. And, uh, yeah, things are looking really good for men's soccer. All right, well, transitioning into uh, women's soccer, the other, other football on campus, uh, if you want to put it that way. I wish I could tell you that they played well. I, I don't really think they did. They lost Friday uh, to Illinois State, the Illinois State Redbirds, in normal Illinois, 5 to nothing. Um, it was scorching heat on the field, apparently. It was supposedly, ISU is supposedly a really tough team, um, and they've had a lot of successes, according to our head coach, uh, Kerry Baker. Um, we allowed only one goal in 45 minutes in that game, and then allowed four goals in 15 minutes. Uh, it was a very physical game, but apparently not physical enough for the NIU Huskies. Uh, moving on to uh, this weekend, Sunday, uh, we tied Northern Iowa um, to break our habit of losing. Um, we tied the Panthers 1-1. One one. Our record now stands at 0-4. Um, I would just like to give a shout-out to Corinne Frankenberg for tying the game and scoring the goal. Way to go! Um, I'm just going to call you out, women's soccer team. Let's, let's get it together. Let's get a win here. Let's, let's move forward and, and get that victory. Well, moving from one sport where women's uh, soccer did not take care of business, volleyball went up to Creighton, take on the Blue Jays, and they won their, uh, the, the invite that the Creighton Blue Jays were hosting. They defeated South Dakota 3 to nothing. Domination. They improved to 6-2 and two overall, um, took advantage of 18 hitting errors by the Blue Jays, 41-35 to 35 in the kills department, and... Two team or two players, two Huskies named to the alternate team. Sophomore Lauren Wazinski and Kristen Hoffman. Also, Wazinski, what do you think she got? She got the MVP of the tournament. Most Great. valuable player. That's you don't get that anywhere else. Don't really get that don't. anywhere else. Yeah, you would have to guess other places to know what MVP means, but we like to help you. Um, 49 kills, 31 digs, seven aces. That is just a solid stat line for this young lady. How about so? How about? Women's Can you volleyball. say more about volleyball terminology right there? I mean, that is that's an amazing, amazing line of stats right there. I just I can't even fathom that. Thanks, uh, congratulations, women's volleyball. You guys keep tearing it up. Keep doing a great job. You yeah, Ray. You just keep it going, and you know I know yeah, you, Ray. I know Ray DJs on the weekends. I've heard and everything, but you keep that up, and if you keep DJing and that's helping your team be good, be good. Keep spinning records, man. Just keep going. Do it. All right, well, let's let's uh, end the show with some national stuff here. It's football season, um, and Jimmy and I are going to give you our picks of the week. Um, first game that I want to talk about here coming up on the schedule, you have St. Louis against Philadelphia. St. Louis is at home, the Rams. Um, this is my pick of the week. This is going to be an upset. The Rams are going to win this game. I'm not going to give you a score because I don't do that. I'm just going to give you a win-loss. 
you know what? There's been a lot of hype about the Eagles this year and the players they got and the people they signed. Who cares? What have they ever done? Mike Vick hasn't even played an entire season in three years. The Rams have Sam Bradford. They signed Mike Sims Walker. They got James the Animal Laurinaitis on defense. They are misunderstood and they are predicted to finish first in the NFC West this year. St. Louis over Philadelphia. So, Jimmy, who do you have? Well, I'm going to go a different route. I agree. I can see the Rams win that game. Uh, forgive me for some of you that may know me personally, but I'm picking the Redskins over the Giants. And one of the reasons, I know that it's kind of up in the air right now between John Beck and Rex Grossman, I think whichever quarterback is going to come out there and they're going to win it. Um, New York secondary, completely depleted. They have a lot of injuries right now, so... Um, Santana Moss and um, I don't even know who the other receivers are for the Redskins because, well, they're just that bad. I think Jabbar Gaffney, maybe. So that's my pick. That, yeah, I just, I, I'm going to just see Grossman. I know he's kind of a midget. He can't really see over the line. Well, maybe we'll get him some high heels and he can figure out a way to, to get it done and everything. And more importantly, I'm going to go with the Bears over Atlanta, too. I think we're going to see the Bears come out. Uh, stick it to former uh, Husky Michael Turner. So... Keep your eyes on that, and thank God it's football. It's back. Be happy, please. Bears. 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 So, well, I think that's about it. Uh, Brian, as usual, it's a pleasure. Jimmy, always, thanks Thanks again for just having me here, having me on. Yeah, yeah I kind of have to. I couldn't do the show all by myself. So, we'll see you next week, everybody.